Hello everyone, this is Dave Wish, back again finally. Uh, this is a video tour of my 1998 Coachman Starflight, which is a Class B+. I'll do the exterior first. As you can see, it's a Ford E350 chassis, and this has the Ford... Triton V8, the 5.4 liter. Uh, the, the interesting thing about the Starflight, it's not a very common RV because the rear is made of fiberglass, similar to a Chinook and some of the coach house RVs. Uh, the fiberglass rear construction is more expensive to make, but it is also more durable and less likely to have leaks. Uh, the difference between this, uh, the Starflight, and the Chinook is the Chinook is a one-piece molded fiberglass in the rear, where this is, I believe, five panels that are put together to make the rear. However, what is, uh, what is interesting about the Starflight here is that the interior walls are also fiberglass so that there's a metal structure tubing uh, also with insulation but sandwiched between the two fiberglass uh, walls the inner and the outer so this was quite expensive to make for for coachmen as opposed to the traditional you know flat panels put together with seams at the corners uh, what this has is the seams are on the side the the for instance the roof is curved and then comes down to the side and the the roof seams where they meet the walls are about eight inches from the top on the side so less likely for the seams to open over time due to fl the chassis flexing and such so let's take a closer look here one th an this is a very early version of the Starflight. Even though it's a 98, it is actually on a 1997 Ford chassis. And this is a pretty much probably one of the first dozen or so to come off the line because what's different is this has the single tires on the rear axle. This does not have the dualies. Every photograph and every video I have found of a Coachman Starflight has dualies on the rear. So this was apparently an early chassis or early production where they use the, the single tires on the rear. However, to make up for the difference, it does have uh, the larger, heavier duty tires. It has LT245s as opposed to the LT225s on the Starflights that have the dually rears. As we walk around the outside, you see there is a Fiamma awning. Uh, up here by the door, obviously you can see there's the furnace exhaust. And that's the door panel there is for an outside entertainment system, which consisted of an AM, FM radio, a cassette player, and two speakers. This is all original. This panel here is just access to underneath the shower. And it also holds the the jack and the lug wrench and, and all. And you also see there the uh, gray water and the black water releases. As we walk around the back, again, this is the rear panel fiberglass that's all joined. Down at the lower right is an outside shower. There's the water heater door access. Uh, I bought this Starflight in 2018, which is, this replaced uh, the previous Coachman Class B camper van that I had that was my first video. So. I, I do like coaching, but it didn't, I'm not specifically looking, 
where I'm not specifically feeling that Coachman makes the best, but I did specifically look for a Coachman Starflight. Once I found that found Coachman Starflights online, I it took me five years to find this one. And again, I found it in 2018. And actually, I found it within 25 miles of my house, which was interesting. And here, I'd been looking all over the place to find one that was close by that I could get. As we walk up to the back here, this is the access. This is pretty much the only storage on the outside. And this compartment, you, as you can see, the sewer hose and the uh, power line are in there, but there's some room to put a few things. Down at the bottom, that's the propane compartment. You can see there's two windows on the side and the back. That's where the the bed is. As we move along the driver's side here, you see there's the refrigerator top vent and then the access to the bottom. Right to the left of it, this is the auxiliary auxiliary battery, the house battery, I should say. That door opens up and the battery comes out on a tray. Uh, below that is the Onan generator, the Microlite 2800. And to the left that's the 110 volt connection when you're camping at the RV park. This is a no these are nice RVs. Uh, Coachman, like I said, because it cost them so much to make these, they only made them for three years. They were more expensive than a larger Coachman Class C because of the fiberglass construction technique. It cost, cost Coachman more money to make these. So, comparably, this is a, this is a 21 foot length. So at the time in 1998, a customer could buy a 25 foot Coachman Class C for the same price as they could this 21 foot Class B plus. But of course the difference was the fiberglass construction, more durable, less like prone to leaking. Now let's go inside. Uh, as you can see up at the top where it says Starflight Coachman Vans, the Starflight was not made at the Elkhart plant with all the other motorhomes and RVs that Coachman made. This was made at their secondary plant where they made the camper vans, the Class B camper vans. So, as I said, this is what people would call a B plus because it does not have a sleeper cab over the top. It just has storage. So inside. First thing I did just want to show you the owner's manual, which is a combination owner's manual for the van camper, the van traveler, and the Starflight. And just wanted to show you the configurations here. The bottom three uh, show the Starflight, which came in three configurations. The rear bed, the L sofa, and the side seating. Uh, this configuration here is the rear bed. So let's go inside. First thing I'll show you that's interesting at the at, when you walk in is the second step here is actually a, a floor safe. There's you see there's little latches on the side. So you release the latches and you have access to your floor safe. So first thing I'll show you is the cockpit. The uh the fabric is a turquoise. This is just a little small love seat behind the driver's driver's seat. But I just wanted to show you the color of the upholstery. I have covers on the driver and passenger seat, but that's not because they're worn or anything. The front seats are in perfect condition. No rips, tears, no stains. Beautiful seats. I just put the covers on there to keep them that way. Let me just shut this door. 
Sorry for the shakiness. Uh, dash, I did put the wood grain applique on the dash, which made it look a little bit nicer. But typical Ford E350 cockpit. As you step back, you can see there's what's in place of on a Class C would be an upper bunk. This has storage up top, cabinets, and it's got quite a bit of room. As you can see in the in the front, it's quite deep going back. And the side doors, more room. It's a, like an L-shaped storage area. It all connects. On the right here, that was where the TV was. Uh, I do have a TV in there. The original TV was a tube TV, and I replaced it with a with a flat screen, and I just rigged it up so that it comes out on this comes out on the same sliding shelf, and that slides back. Let me lock it in and shut the doors. Over here, right next to the door. You can see those doors, the little bottom panel is where the video cassette player used to be because it was a video cassette player and a tube TV. But the TV is a combination, a DVD player television. So that's all storage now, just upper storage. Below that happens to be a radio for inside, AM, FM cassette. Below that, is a folding chair which is the same fabric as the rest of the RV. The folding chair is from Coachman and that's so you can have a second person sitting at the dinette. Over here I showed you previously was the little little love seat that's behind the driver's seat. Uh, there's a drawer beh behind I'm sorry, below that, and of course the power center converter that's there, the drawer here. On some versions, there was an option for this little sofa seat to pull out into a single bed. However, this one does not have that option, so it's purely just a sofa. And you can see right behind the driver's seat is the table. I'm sorry, there's the, there's the table. And I also have the post for it in the corner. But that goes right here in the floor. That's the where you put the pole. And then the table goes right there in front of the little mini, mini love seat. One thing interesting about the table is that it has a slide. For where the post connects so that way when you're when you're in the sitting at the seat at the table you can push the table out to get more room to get up and then pull it closer to you when you sit back down to have the, your meal closer to you let me put that back the uh, when you walk in one thing that's interesting also there to the left is a carpeted panel which this gives you more floor space you pull that out and drop that in right in front of the door now you have more floor space so that when you get take the uh, folding chair out and have the dining room table set up the person there in the chair if they move back too far they're not going to fall down the front step they're the entry step they're they're going to be fine. So yeah, gives you extra room. Also, when you travel, you can put that panel in there over the steps, and it gives you a little bit extra room, you know, for people, pets, or or obviously when you're set up. Let me let's look at the back. Uh, to the right is the kitchen. Uh, uh, more cabinets above the love seat. Cabinet above the kitchen area and you can see there's a two burner propane stove in the sink 
the Dometic refrigerator below. Uh, I did replace that the when I bought this in 98. The original refrigerator did not work, so that's a RM2354 three-way fridge, which replaced the original three-way fridge that was here. And uh, above the stove, you have the 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 hood hood vent, which is also your panel to check all your levels and such. So if you see there, battery is fully charged, LP tank is full, fresh water, gray water, and black water are empty. But you also have your buttons for the water pump, your the hood light, and the hood fan. You know, obviously the door is up at the top here. One thing that's also different about this and why it's early production is these smaller cabinets up here, not not the one above the sink, but all the ones that also go around the bed, they're hinged on the side and open up like traditional doors. All the other star flights I've seen have the hinge at the top and the door opens up towards the top. So again, this is this one has some slightly different ways they produced manufactured it that are different than most star flights that's why i'm saying again this is an early production one it is on the, the 97 chassis even though they sold it as a 1998. Uh, over here in the kitchen area you have three drawers for silverware and such and right above the top drawer you have a 12 volt out have a 12 volt outlet there's your water heater switch, and then a 110 outlet. Sink has a nice wood cover. It's in great shape. That's the sink. That's the original faucet. And little spice rack that came from Coachman. Up at the top when we look, you see the cabinets, speaker goes all the way around. Here's the bed, they, they call it the rear bed. It's in the corner, got the little corner of the uh, mattresses clipped off. Your uh, generator start from the inside, is switch is right there under the bed. There is storage under the bed. Not a, not a ton, but I'll show you. But kind of an L-shaped storage area underneath because the water tank is also under the bed and the water heater. So push that back down. Let me back up a little bit and go here to the left. That is a, a wardrobe. So when you first walk in the entry door with the microwave above it. And below the wardrobe is your furnace. There's your, there's your closet. Also has a small drawer at the bottom. Looking to the back, to the left of the bed is the wet bath. It's a little bit tight width-wise does have a skylight up there. And it's pretty much a, unless you're very short, it's pretty much a sit down shower. You can sort of stand up there to go to the bathroom, but it would, it's kind of difficult. I'm 5'10 and I have to, my head is touching the ceiling window to the side here and let me get positioned to show you the little bathroom sink that's in the corner here so there's the bathroom sink cabinet below 110 outlet right below the sink up there to the left you can see the air conditioner and heater thermostat and up more up to the top there you see the medicine cabinet 
the medicine cabinet's kind of interesting in that let me turn the light up is yeah it looks like a typical medicine cabinet but then you can open it up and there's a secondary mirror on the inside so if you wanted to stand on from here you could or if you wanted to stand on the other side and use the front mirror you could a towel bar there between the shower and the sink a little magazine rack there on the wall next to the bed and the curtain here that you see there if you see if you look you see there's a track up on the roof that goes around curves and then comes over towards the microwave and what that does is give you some privacy if you're getting out of the shower that gives you like kind of a little dressing area that's private from the rest of the RV so if for some reason you aren't comfortable with your uh, traveling partner seeing you naked and let me just yeah, the typical toilet. And let me see, if I stand in here... Sorry for that, you can... My head fits in the skylight, but otherwise... You can't really stand in up, up there to take a shower. Again, this is a 21-foot length. It's considered a Class B+, plus on the Ford chassis. An interesting vehicle. One thing that's nice about it too, and that's the one thing I'm not crazy about in a lot of RVs, is I don't like that there's not what I call a living area. Uh, a lot of RVs, it seems like there's just a, a narrow hallway going between everything, and it's just narrow, and to pass by someone, you're like you're squeezing by them, but there's no area for everybody to just where you can kind of have a little bit of open space so that if you did have some pets or you're a partner there, you're not just scraping and bumping into each other to move around. So it's nice that it has this little open area up towards the front. Another thing that, um, that, that the uh, technique for making this, that they went more quality, this has ducted roof air. So if you look up at the top, you can see the the roof vents and you see one there and one there and then again so there's six of them total and there's the air conditioner up at the top and then you have six roof vents for the ducted air it's a really nice rv when I bought it, it had 61,000 miles on it in 2018. It now has 69,000. I've driven it to New Mexico once, and I live on the East Coast. So that's 2,000 miles each way. And I also drove it to Milwaukee, Wisconsin twice, which was about 1,000 miles each way. I think I've covered just about everything. Got a little clock above the door. And there is a fantastic fan up at the top too. So this pretty much concludes the tour of my 1998 Coachman Starflight. Um, oh, I should mention that it is not for sale. I am selling this and the new owner is picking it up today. So if you ever see a Coachman Starflight, they're pretty neat. Coachman made them only for three years, 1998, 1999, and 2000. And then they decided to sell the, the rights to the vehicle and the molds to Dynamax. And then Dynamax made the 
made the star flight and it was called a dynamax star flight and they made that for three years from 2001 to 2003 dynamax did make some changes they made they ended up near the end of their production widening their their star flight version by six inches and they also made a longer length too so they changed from 21 foot and i believe they moved it back to i think 23 or 24 foot maximum but i think they made the shorter one also and dynamax also used a ford or a chevy chassis where coachman uh, exclusively used the ford chassis for their star flights and again most of them have the dualies on the rear but this is an, kind of an oddball early production that just has the uh, two tires on the back well thank you very much for listening and watching hope you enjoyed seeing a coachman starflight which is a an odd or sh i shouldn't say an odd rv it's just i should say it's a rare rv so you don't see many of them they do last because of the fiber lake glass construction uh, this one is in very very good condition very few leaks and what leaks there were were fixed but nothing major it's just one window had the uh, vents water vents clogged and just regular maintenance like any other rv gonna miss it but i'm not gonna need an rv anymore i'm replacing it with the conversion van so that'll suit my travel needs but again thank you for watching and Take care.